The history of Sega in Brazil is one of the most interesting tales in all of gaming. This unique market was different from any other in the world thanks to Brazil's own tech toy, with Sega dominating the console wars in the region for years. In this peculiar landscape, not only were both the Sega Master System and Mega Drive more popular than Nintendo platforms, but a local distributor tech toy continued to sell new Master Systems and Mega Drives on their website to this very day. So, with the tech toy and Sega relationship resulting in a consistently impressive dominance, you would expect the Sega Saturn to have excelled in the country too. Keeping all of this in mind, join me today as we unravel the tale of Sega's next generation of console gaming within South America's largest country, and how this impressive platform fared. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of the Sega Saturn in Brazil. Brazil is a region with a gaming history unlike any other, whereby the impressive collaborative work between Tectoy and Sega would result in dozens of 8-bit and 16-bit regional exclusives that could only be enjoyed there and nowhere else. However, it is not just these generations of Sega hardware that had unique impacts over there. The Saturn's run was considerably different to everywhere else too. Sega consoles would first begin being distributed in Brazil back in 1989, with the Master System debuting two years after it had arrived in Europe, three years after it was released in the United States, and four years after the Mark III had first shown up in Japan. Tektoy had been successfully awarded the distribution deal to begin selling Sega consoles after previously impressing the company by selling Sega's laser tag game based on the anime known as Zillion. Despite Sega's 16-bit console already being available in some parts of the world, the Master System quickly established a strong install base, with the Mega Drive seeing a release in the country just one year later. Over time, Tectoy would claim 80% of the Brazilian video game market. A large contributing factor to both of these console successes includes their affordability, with Tectoy continuing to push both systems well after the times they were discontinued in other markets, with many games seeing release well after the days the plugs were pulled on these platforms elsewhere. But what for the Saturn? Well, with Sega already having a great footing in the country by the mid-90s, rather than having to wait years for the Saturn to arrive like Brazilian consumers had done with the Master System, instead the Sega Saturn became available in the region in 1995. This was the same year the Saturn saw release in North America and Europe, and only shortly after Japan themselves, who received the hardware on store shelves in November of 1994. Brazilian consumers would first be able to witness the Sega Saturn in action at the 1995 Feira de Utilidades Domésticas, a pronunciation that I am almost 100% butchering, which translates to Household Utilities Fair, an annual event that was commonly abbreviated simply as UD. These huge electronic expos would take place in Sao Paulo every year. According to Portuguese language speaking Brazilian YouTuber Retro Gamer Brazil, they state in a Portuguese spoken YouTube upload that Stefano Arn, the then president of Tectoy, would drum up publicity to the Brazilian press, that Brazil would be the first country away from Japan to receive the Saturn, with the country receiving the hardware as early as August 1995, meaning Brazilians would have been able to enjoy this platform before US citizens. However, if you know your gaming history and the well-documented early US release to compete with the PlayStation, in that case you will be aware that Americans would end up getting the system as early as May of 1995, rather than having to wait until September as intended. What made this amusing is that some in the Brazilian press would continue to report that Brazil would be the first country away from Japan to get the console, even after it had already arrived in the US. When the Saturn did debut in Brazil, this CD-ROM based console was, unsurprisingly, extremely expensive. Most average kids in the richest country in the world, the United States, were denied Saturns on launch day. So it's no shock really that in the developing market of Brazil, Tectoy strategically only made 700 Saturn units available, all of which were imported from the United States. 
According to SegaRetro.org, these Saturns would have internal modifications to make them suitable for the domestic Brazilian market, including custom power supplies and all units being fitted to output the PAL-M signal. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering what that is... This sometimes included changing the master clock to 14.302446 MHz, but sometimes they only added a separate subboard with an oscillator and fed the clock input directly to the video encoder, leaving the default 14.318 MHz master clock in place. Not long after the US batch arrived, Tectoy would commence the task of producing Saturns themselves, with the console launching in the region with Clockwork Knight, Panzer Dragoon, Worldwide Soccer and Virtua Fighter, the latter of which also functioned as a pack-in game. Something interesting about Saturn collecting is how different the game's boxes look from region to region, with Japan, North America and Europe's styles of boxes all being very different once more. Brazil's games looked different again with them receiving these rather snazzy looking white cardboard boxes with the Tech Toy logo emblazoned in the corner. To make games more suitable for the Brazilian market, Tech Toy would also go to the effort of localizing some games to feature the Portuguese language. This would include the sequel to Myst, known as Riven. As we move towards 1998 in this unique story, globally the second Saturn's star power was fading. The console was infamously slowly being phased out in North America and Europe, with the majority of energy being placed into the up-and-coming Sega Dreamcast platform. This would result in some pretty miserable turns of events, such as the amazing X-Men vs Street Fighter fighting game for the system seeing its US and European releases completely cancelled. While to some degree the console would continue to trudge forward in its homeland of Japan. In Brazil, Tectoy would continue to support the hardware past the point that the Saturn had pretty much been abandoned in the West. Keeping the Saturn on life support in the country, just like in Japan, thanks to Tectoy, Brazil would receive the iconic white model of the console, and perhaps even more excitingly, in 1999, Brazil would get a PAL-M translucent Sega Saturn, the same beautiful model that was packed with the game Derby Stallion in Japan. The crazy thing is the Japanese version of this console is worth an absolute fortune, so I cannot begin to fathom how much this Brazilian variant could be worth. Whoever out there in the world who happens to own one of these things is likely sitting on an absolute gold mine. Despite Brazil featuring much cooler Saturn variants than what can be found in the West, sadly the Sega Saturn would prove even less popular in Brazil than it was in both Europe and North America, continents in which the Sega Saturn is considered a dud. But this raises the question, why did it all go wrong for the Tectoy Saturn when it went so well for both the Tectoy Mega Drive and Master System? Well, the first factor is obviously the pricing. The Saturn with its CD-ROM drive was a much more expensive option than its predecessors. But with Sega having a footing in Brazil but not the PlayStation yet, you would expect it to at least beat that, right? Well, no. Due to the insane 60% import tax on foreign electronics, PlayStations were not officially launched in the region until the PS2 in 2009, but that did not prevent Brazilians from getting their hands on PS1s previously through the import grey market. You see, apart from featuring a much, much richer gaming library than Sega's console that was officially available on the market, there was another key difference between these two competing pieces of hardware. Piracy. During its time on the market, the ability to pirate Sega Saturn games was never worked out, with the same thing not being said for the PlayStation. Gamers all over the world were having their Sony PlayStations chipped, thus meaning that even in a region like Brazil, where money might be a little tighter than in other places, Brazilian gamers had a way of accessing hundreds of Sony PlayStation games at will. With such an option available, who in their right mind is going to want to Sega Saturn when it was possible to enjoy all of that PlayStation goodness? Nevertheless, Tectoy's influence and control over the Brazilian console market is the stuff of legends, even if the Sega Saturn failed to make the same impact as its predecessors. Despite its shortcomings, the Brazilian Saturn remains an interesting tale and who wouldn't want one of these translucent bad boys?
Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then check out my videos on a Brazilian exclusive Mega Drive and Master System games now.